Here is how you can use Instagram DMs to get more clients for your B2B business. Now, this is a video that I recorded about a year ago and it did pretty well. And it's about time I updated it. So here it is, we have the updated version. We're gonna go over how to find people, how to reach out to them, what to say, how to do personalization. This is gonna be pretty in depth, but also very concise. So we're gonna use our time wisely here. We're gonna make this really tangible. We're gonna make sure you walk away after watching this video with your next steps very clear. So let's get into it. So here we are in my laptop on this beautiful Notion document and we're gonna be going over four different sections, kind of like a whole mini course here. We have four modules. The first one is setting up your Instagram account. The second one is going to be finding prospects to direct message. The third is going to be writing your script. And the fourth is going to be measuring your results. So let's get into module number one here, which is gonna be setting up your Instagram account. Now, a little bit of human psychology. Your Instagram account matters. Consider if you got two direct messages that both said the exact same thing. Account one has 10,000 followers. They have content that's highly related to what they're offering. And they seem very interesting, well-known, and kind of an authority in the space. Option number two is going to be a private account. 20 followers, five posts, and all of them are in the last week. Obviously, account one, account A is who you're going to trust. And I know the response to this is, well, I don't have 10K followers. Well, that sucks. And it's going to be harder if you don't have 10K followers. Me saying that there's a magic formula to have no social proof and to do well with DMs would be lying to you. Can you get clients without much social proof? Yes. Will it be harder? Yes. So the trick is to power through and to build a real asset that has value. That way you can get the best results, but you still need to start. So it's not an excuse to not start today. It's just something to take into account when you're looking at the results you're getting. So what type of account should you use if you're starting out? Option A, we have a personal account. Option B, a business account. And option C, what I call a hybrid account. So let's go through these. A personal account is the account where you post pictures to your mom, your girlfriend, your friends. It's just a pure personal account. Option B is gonna be a business account. This is gonna be a account that's named after your business, has your company logo, and it's just your business, it's not you. Option three is going to be a hybrid account. My account, which I'll have a screenshot somewhere here, is what's considered a hybrid account. It is about my business, but it's tied to me. It's essentially a personal brand account. And this is what we want to use. So you can use your personal account. If you had to choose between business and personal account, personal will convert better. People like talking to a person, not just a random business page. But ideally, we do want to have a hybrid account, which is like a personal brand account that's our business and us in combination. Now, if you don't have an account, Here's the basics. Start by looking at industry leaders in your service, niche, segment, whatever you want to call your market, and consider what their profile photos look like. Probably headshots. What type of content do they have? Is it case studies? Is it blogs? Is it tutorials? Is it post event? How are their bios written? Are there any patterns? What are they saying? Is there one call to action? Is there two links? And where are those links going? Is it going to YouTube? Is it going to an email list? Is it going right to their offer, to a calendar link? And then follow them as well and look at the stories they post. What are they doing to actually get people engaged? Now, the very bare basics, and this won't be like a personal branding one-on-one course, but we're going to use some common sense here. Sophisticated username. Um, iHeart Motorcycle 748 is probably not the best name to do outreach from. So a sophisticated username, probably your name. A clean headshot. Guys, specifically girls, you know what you're doing. But guys, no glasses, no hat. Stop looking away from the camera. Like a clean headshot. Uh, not a corporate one either, just like a clean headshot. Um, bio with social proof, ideally, maybe mention about a client you worked with for years in business. If you don't have it, it's okay too. And a very clear, here's what I do. It shouldn't be like, here's all the ways I'm great. It should be, I do this for this person. For example, here's your example. There we go. Stories, so social proof. If you could add story highlights that show case studies or testimonials, great. Um, content related to what you sell, either on stories or in posts. And lastly, follow people, like content, be a, a real user. If you just make an account and you don't do anything on it and you then start DMing people, Instagram's like, hey, what's this guy doing? Kind of fishy and that's not good. So be a real person. And there we have it. That is setting up your Instagram account. Now, module two of this YouTube video, which is finding prospects to DM. And we're gonna talk about three different ways of finding prospects. If you don't know what a prospect is, a prospect is just somebody who matches the customer profile you wanna reach out to, and that is a prospect. So first one is looking at the followers of your competitors. So you find a competitor 
or a page that has the similar followers that you want to reach out to. Um, you know, this would be like a software company. For example, if you sell cold email services, the followers of Instantly, Smart Lead, Lemless, Mailshake, QuickMail, Woodpecker, um, influencer related to your industry. For example, if you are um, selling systems automation, maybe you look at like Jordan Ross or Avila Bavala or a podcast related to. If you're targeting high net worth entrepreneurs, maybe look at like uh, Entrepreneur on Fire and the followers of that. So it could be a competitor or a page that has a lot of people that the ones who following it are likely to be someone you can serve. We then want to look at their top engagers. These are people who comment on their posts. These are people who like their posts. And we're going to take those account. We're going to take them through a validation process to make sure it's someone you can help. We don't want to waste our DMs on people we can't help. And we really want to have quality because there are tight restrictions on DMs on Instagram. So we want to make sure every lead has the best chance of working. So what do we consider? Does their bio or the link indicate they have a business you can actually help? If you work with dentists and they do landscaping, invalidated. Do they appear to be in a country you can serve? I don't know if you work with businesses that are based in some random place like Tuvalu. Probably not. So are they in a country that you can actually serve? Do they look like someone you'd work with? If they have a bunch of pictures of them doing inappropriate activities, I uh, won't say anything as YouTube will demonetize me, um, you probably don't want to work with them. And these are the filters um, but you know, things I would consider, but also depending on what you're looking at, you know, followers might matter, maybe traffic on website, whatever. So choose whatever filters you want, but we want to take them through a validation, um, phase. And then finally add these people to a spreadsheet. That is your list. This is very easy. Do not overcomplicate it. Number two, hashtags, make a list of hashtags that your ideal customer is likely to use. Let's say that you're selling sales consulting. You could look up hashtags with sales influencer. For example, hashtag Joey Gilkey. You could look up hashtags related to um, sales, like hashtag remote closer, or hashtags related to a book about sales, hashtag fanatical prospecting. So we could take these lists of hashtags, and then we could find accounts that have posted with these hashtags, and we could run them through a validation process. Same thing. Does their bio indicate that there's someone you can help? Does the link in their bio indicate they have a business you can help? Are they in a country you can serve? Do they look like somebody you want to work with? And then other filters add them to a spreadsheet, that is your list. Now, as a bonus, if you find somebody who is a great fit, look at the other hashtags they're using and consider, add, consider adding that to your hashtag list to build more similar people. Method number three, finding contacts somewhere else and sourcing Instagrams. Now, this would be if you already have a list building process made from cold emails or cold calls, physical mail, whatever, you would just find your contacts initially and then look for Instagram. Now, if you don't already have a way to get contacts, I actually have a tool that can help you get contacts around a very specific ICP. These are clean, verified contacts that are ready for hours. It's contactquack.com slash scrape. Pricing is really competitive and it's very fast and easy. So if you don't have a list process, check out Contact Quack. There's also a link below. Now, take your list of contacts, whether you got them from Contact Quack or you got them from your own tech stack. And then what you want to do is go to our website, and try to find if there's a company page linked. If there is, add it to your list. And you shouldn't do any external validation here because your list should already be pre-validated. So it's not like you're doing this, then checking all other things. If you're coming from a list you own, it should be pre-validated. If there's no Instagram page linked, we're gonna do this very advanced tactic. We're gonna search company name Instagram. That's it. There should be a result. If there's not, move on. Now, if there's no Instagram, we're gonna search title of a, of a name Instagram. So like the owner's name or the COO, who you wanna reach on Instagram. And this will bring up someone's direct personal page. I like to avoid messaging people who have private pages out of respect for privacy. Do what you want. But yeah, I, I like to only reach out the ones who seem to post about business a little bit, which a lot will in larger companies. Uh, now you have your list. And we have a bonus here. This is a very simple process, but it is time consuming. The first few times you're doing this, you should do it yourself. So you understand the process. You know what hashtags, you know what accounts. You should do this yourself initially. But from here, considering turning this into an SOP, if you don't know what SOP is, it is a standard operating procedure, essentially an instruction manual, but you can hire someone from Upwork to manage for you. And if you want help automating your lead gen by building a team and applying really advanced processes that get you a lot of meetings, make sure to check out grow2b2b.io where you can work with myself and my team to build you a absolute beast of a client acquisition machine that's been refined from working with hundreds of B2B businesses. Self plug over. And let's go ahead and get into the third module of this video, which is the one that most people ask me about. What do I say? Writing your script. Now, people dread this. It's not hard, promise. It's really not that bad. So more than your actual message, you'll be judged on 
if your page looks legit, sorry, but it's the truth. If your company looks legit, if you have a standard ClickFunnels template that looks like everybody else's websites, grammar mistakes, and a headshot that looks like you're in third grade, tough luck. Um, and if there's actually demand for your offer, if there's tons of competition, people doing the same thing, like there is no beautiful cold DM template that's gonna work if no one wants what you sell. That is the truth of this. If you have an offer, it's pre-validated from cold calls or cold email or mail or ads, this is much more likely to work for you, same as anything else. And I've already read for this note, but yeah, it's important to people actually want the thing you offer. Now, one thing I see people do sometimes is they do outreach over and over and over and over and over again. And they're like, it must be my messaging. It must be my messaging. But they never realize people just don't want your thing. So we want to be persistent and keep trying. But at some point, you need to realize maybe people don't want your thing. And instead of testing new messaging, you need to test a new thing. So, yeah. So let's go over the actual structure. And this is a very underwhelming but it's lethally effective. So let's get in. Now, first I want to add that there are multiple right ways to do things. Don't think that this is the only way to send DMs. This is the way I have had success sending DMs. There are always gonna be a lot of right ways to run ads, send cold emails, do cold calls, do cold DMs. Just like anything in life, there are multiple right answers. This is mine. And if you want even more in-depth guides and other ways, it will be to be. Now, the structure. First name, personalized line, leading question. Does it seem underwhelming? It is, but it works damn well, and we're gonna get into some examples. So we are going to put together a hypothetical situation here. That way we can get really into weeds and give like a really tangible example here. So we're gonna pretend that we are selling funnel creation to coaches. Funnels like a sales funnel, coaches being people that sell coaching, life coaching, fitness coaching, whatever. And let's say that we're finding these coaches on hashtag life coach. How do we find them on hashtag life coach? You're skipping a video, aren't you? Go back up where I show you how to find people through hashtags. Um, so we're finding them on hashtag life coach. If I can find where I was in my document, maybe I'm blind. All right, here we go. And uh, first thing is to figure out what our leading question will be. And I use this leading question to split test different pain points and also call to actions. I normally start with five and I send each to 25 people. So let's look at five leading questions. Leading question number one, to give an example. Quick one, are you sending your coaching prospects direct to a call or have you tried using a sales funnel? If you're selling sales funnel, that's a good thing to ask and it's easy to respond to. Example number two, check your site. Do you have many customers go from social media to a site and then turn into calls or are you mainly leading clients word of mouth? Leading question number three. Wanted to know if you'd be open to a quick video showing how I helped life coach at XYZ username using a case study here. Get 15 high ticket clients using sales funnels. Let me know, I'll send it over. Really easy for them to say yes, send me the video. Number four. No, this is random, but are you familiar with sales funnels? Leading question number five. Sorry if I'm a bit nosy, but I know she had a rap traditional site. I'm wondering if you ever tested a sales funnel. <clears throat> now all of these have a little bit different call to action, a little different pain point. So we're getting a good amount of testing and we're gonna send them each to 25 people here. And that's it. We just wanna see what question drives more engagement. Now there isn't like some perfect script that's gonna go out to people and they're going to book on your calendar with their credit cards up. We are having conversations with people. Social media is social. We are using the platform as it is intended, starting conversations and building trust and rapport. Now, from here, we need to do our first name and personalized line. First name is easy. Look on the page, put their name. If there is no name, I know I'm gonna say, hey, uh, or hey, or hey, company name team, or sometimes I just say nothing. I just get into the question. So let's talk about the first lines here. So we're gonna talk about first lines and some examples. I know some of you struggle on this. All right, let's get into some examples. Example number one. I just use hashtag life coach and I found people. If you're watching this video and I use an example, hey, first we have Jennifer. Jennifer passed my validation period. I can see what she does. Um, she has like a cycling group. Very cool. Jennifer, if you're watching this, your biking thing looks cool. So what would my personalized line be? Hey Jennifer, the photos you post that peer reviewed to cycling have me wanting to book a trip. Looks gorgeous. It's a, like a biking group thing. That's it. Really not that complicated. Um, example number two. We have Surya Naran Amadas. That is 
definitely pronounced correct. And he does a lot of interesting things here. So what would I say to him? Surya, can't get any more legit than a SpongeBob profile picture. Love it. Now, to be fair, when I recorded this, this man had a SpongeBob profile picture. It is clear because I made this document a few days ago. He has removed it. But you trust me, he had a SpongeBob um, a SpongeBob profile picture, which is no longer relevant. Um, am I going to re-record that part? No. Just believe me. Um, all right. Lily Wang, quantum success coach. First line. Hey, Lily. Loved reading through your case study and helping a client add 200K of leadership skills. It's amazing how much communication skills pay off. This is based on a case study that she had because either on a story on her page or something. Really basic things. We're just commenting on something on a profile picture or a bio or a post or story, and that's it. We combine your first line with a question and we send it. For example, hey Lily, loved reading for your case study and helping a client add 200k of leadership skills. It's amazing how much communication skills can pay off. No, this is random, but are you familiar with sales funnels? Done. It's really simple. So let's talk about measuring results. This is part four here. Now, we're not going to go super in-depth in tracking. Again, I'm going to self-plug here because I'm also a salesperson teaching you the sales stuff. And at growb2b.io, we have awesome resources on tracking. But I'm going to give you some guidance, even in this video. You should set up some type of basic Kanban board, Trello, Notion, Asana, Airtable. These are just a drag and drop boards where you can track progress or a spreadsheet, track how many DMs you send, as well as where you source people and what leading question you use. Testing is not useful if you're not taking data from that test and making yourself better. We want to get better, not just do the same thing over and over in randomness. And then from here, we let that data tell us what audience perform best, as well as what leading question works best. And once you have some leading questions that are winning, remove non-winners, and make more variations based on a winner. If it's a call to action that's always working, make more based on a call to action. If it's a pain point, make more poking that pain point. And continue this process, and you will see better and better results. Now, I'm going to emphasize this. It sounds so simple. I see a lot of people who say, oh, I should be split testing. And they split test. But they don't think that the point of split testing is getting better. And if you're not removing things and adding things and actually looking at the data, you will not get better. And then finally, make sure you're tracking the amount of clients you sign, as well as your client lifetime value in terms of revenue and profit. This will give you metrics to eventually scale by removing yourself. If you don't know what a customer's worth and you don't know how much it costs to get a customer, how can you hire people or multiple people to do this for you and actually have any idea about profitability? So thank you for coming to my TED talk on sending Instagram DMs. We covered a lot here. Don't overcomplicate it. It works well. And give it a test. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Or if you want to work more one-on-one, -on -one, again, grow b 2 b to o. That's where myself, my business partner, Felipe, and my team help you out with your prospecting. And if you enjoyed, like the video, and I will see you in the next one.